working in the water utility is a highly stressed job. Yeah. Oftentimes it is not understood. But the only time you get a conversation about water is either when you have quality alarms issues, then the public go awry, or when you have quantity issues, when there's really little or no water. So you can actually appreciate the stress that we are yes. enduring now at NWC because we're going in our ninth month of drought. Welcome to Distilled, conversations with global water leaders. Distilled is brought to you by KTM, and I'm your host, Will Sarney, CEO of Water Foundry and founder and general partner of Water Foundry Event. During each episode, we speak to leaders who are doing their part to solve wicked water problems. We talk about their career, their perspectives on the water sector, and what might be next in the world of water. So I'm very excited to have my friend, an incredibly dapper dresser, <laughs> Mark Bart. <laughs> We could not have coordinated any better, Mark. It's unbelievable. <laughs> it, it, the only thing would have been better if I was in Jamaica with you, but we'll work on that. Uh, so uh, Mark Barnett, president and CEO of National Water Commission of Jamaica. And Mark, welcome to Distilled. Thank you, Will. Thank you for having me. I think we, we had missed a few dates, but it's never too late this year for a show of rain. So... I'm happy to be here. Well, we 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 finally got it. So I'm yeah. really excited to uh, to chat with you. Um, you know, I always enjoy seeing you every year at, at Wex Global. So uh, this is a real treat for me. I somewhat tell me a little bit about your background. Um, this, you know, in turn, <laughs> no, 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 not your your, your professional background. Oh so, yeah, oh certainly. You know, um, hey, 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 your your you know engineering degrees and. How did you get hooked on water? I mean, you've been doing this for, you know, quite some time and obviously yes. very passionate and thoughtful. So I, I want to say it's it's sheer coincidence. Um, so I started out at college here in Jamaica at uh, the College of Arts, Science and Technology. And I did chemical technology at the time, uh, did a diploma. I went to work into the industry, see what is happening in the industry, in some of our major industries. And then, you know, incidentally, when I went to universities, it was a friend of mine who fell, filled out the application for me because my interest was, you know, I want to go either to Canada or to the U.S. to do, you know, my first degree. That didn't work out, but my friend said, let's go to Trinidad St. Augustine and let's do engineering. And I got through. I don't know. I didn't want to say that I'm bright or brilliant at the time, but I only spent two years in engineering as a result of the diploma that I did at the previous college. So like most persons who do three years in the Caribbean, I did two. And it came with a lot of work. It, it, it was a lot of work. But, you know, a group of us, we, you know, stuck together. We, you know, took to the material and we got it done. Came back to Jamaica, I went into the Environmental Agency, currently National Environmental Protection Agency, where I worked for six months. Something just told me that I need to change. I need to be somewhere else. And, you know, the Agio bought out a company that I applied to in 1996. Wow, time flies. And <laughs> you, you don't and, look them all the work. So yeah, keep, thank you. Yeah. So I got you know, I, and I did two two interviews. I, I I believe I was on course to get both jobs. So I was getting the private sector job, which is with you know a company that now owns the Agio. So Red Stripe beer, they would they are the ones who make that beer, Heineken, you know those type of beverages. And in the same breath, I did an interview with the National Water Commission. It so happened that the government entity was ahead in terms of making their decision. So I'd actually accepted this job at the NWC as a wastewater engineer in 1996. I started March 4th, 1996. And 
more or less a week or so after I accepted this job, uh, the company, the private sector company called, offered me the job. I then said to them, you know, I have to be honest with you. I actually accepted another job. So, and I think it is unreasonable to the other company not to have accepted or start the job having accepted. So I stuck with, uh, that's how it's all began in the water business. 4th of March, 1996. Uh, Mark, um, I love your journey. Uh, <laughs> my, mine is, is, you know, actually somewhat similar in terms yeah. of getting degrees and um, not necessarily taking to it initially, but ultimately getting hooked on it. Yes. You know, navigating a way. And, and by the way, there's such a natural transition from making beer and water you know, as a utility. So I, yes. I, you know, it all hangs together very nicely. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, so the journey in NWC will has been, I would want to say it has its more pluses than negatives. I, I, I would not have been here if it wasn't overwhelmingly uh, beneficial and supportive. So the first job I landed here, I did it for two years and then I moved to another location, did that for another two years. Then I thought it was necessary to apply to the UK, to Loughborough University, to do a water and waste engineering degree. Got through. Didn't take it up at the first go because <laughs> I have to sort out financing. And I had actually made a pledge, a mental pledge to myself that, you know, my higher degree, I want the company to pay for it. And for that reason, I know I have to work and demonstrate that I'm worthy of that um, investment. Uh, but in the middle of that, my then vice president said, OK, we're not going to send you to the UK just yet. Uh, we believe you need more time in the business. But here is a compromise. We're sending you to Japan for three months to do wastewater and sewage drainage system. I did that in 1999. So you can see there is a progressive trajectory in terms of capacity building. And I came back in December 99, spent another year, and then I think I'm now ready to take on the higher degree. In 2001, I was accepted at Loughborough again, and that's where I started in 2002 to do my master's degree at Loughborough University uh, in the U U UK. And so there it is. I, I, <laughs> I love it. Um, it. I've got a couple of questions. You know, it, it's interesting that you, you built this base of experience and then you went back to school. Did you find yeah. that to be a, uh, an advantage in a lot of ways, you know, compared to your contemporaries because you came with a body of knowledge? I think it serves me well and it serves some of my other colleagues at university as well because when we do study group it your experience is always something to listen to and persons learn from that i, I certainly have no regrets having to work in between uh studies and i think it has augurs well overall in terms of bringing additional experience uh, to the ad academic pursuit as well so, in other words, Will, you can write more practically, more than theoretically right. when you're doing papers. You know, that's that's one of the, 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 the benefits, I, I believe. Yeah, I, I completely agree with you. Um, yeah. And it's interesting to hear, you know, your journey. Again, it's it's similar to mine. I, uh, I was working when I was getting my master's. So yeah. I had, you know, the, the, as you pointed out, the practical side, and then I had you know, the educational piece of the puzzle. And yes, it, you know, it, it's certainly not something that I had planned, but it, it's the way it played out. And, you know, as they say, it is what it is. So I'll um, give you a story. I only plan <laughs> to stay five years at the NWC. <laughs> five <laughs> years. <laughs> and I thought I'll move on. But um, I guess the company had plans for me. And now I'm here 27 years. National Water Commission um, is very progressive and very transparent. I mean, I, I loved going on your site and there was information on, you know, the drought and water levels, uh, 
you know, infrastructure and, and also it appeared to be, and, and tell me if I'm wrong, you're having this two way conversation with your customers where you're putting yes. out information and you're proactively asking your customers to come back to you and engage with you. It, did I get that right? You're absolutely correct. You're absolutely correct. Because over time, we have customers who become delinquent for various reasons. And so we have to develop a communication strategy plus a product, of course, that will encourage or, let's say, motivate those customers to really want to be legitimate on your network. And, and that is something that we have taken a lot of effort in, in, in doing. It's a time-consuming effort. It requires a lot of work that most of our staff are not so trained to do. But it is a worthwhile experience that I believe will augur as well for the organization. I, I agree. Um, again, it just struck me that you built this brand that is engaging and trusted and, uh, you know, really thinking about the future, um, yeah. you know, certainly the way, you know, you're talking about water scarcity and you know, conservation and reuse and providing resources, uh, to your customer base. I, I, I was really impressed with that. Mark, remind me, uh, I don't recall if you said in, in some of our earlier conversations, if your yes. service area is growing the uh, connectivity, infrastructure, and so on. So, you know, where where do you stand in terms of growth and challenges associated in delivering your uh, product and wow. service? This is a big <laughs> question, Will, I will tell yeah. you. So, you know, we, we, sorry, we're doing both. So we're trying to replace, upgrade existing, as well as expanding footprint. So you can understand the dynamics of resource management and allocation as it relates to that. But yes, our customer base is actually ex ex expanding, is increasing. Uh, one of the main areas is a proliferation of residential developments, which is really pushing that growth. And you find this is now happening not just in the capital city or in most urban uh, centers, but right across the island. So there's an increased demand for the NWC services. And so we have to at least try as much as possible to match that design, uh, demand, uh, at least when the time comes, when those developments come on stream. Interesting. And um, are, you, are you seeing the private sector uh, more engaged with you as uh, you know a service provider? That's, that's you know, a, a trend that you know, we're seeing globally, there's a little bit more engagement. Uh, I think it's not, the private sector is more engaged. Let's say there's a greater appetite of the private sector to provide a uh, service, more so from a bulk perspective as when it comes to supply, selling to the NWC. But where the private sector is really involved is they are the ones driving most of the demand. <laughs> Meaning they are the ones who are involved in most of the developments that are happening. So, yeah. so you can understand. So you have the, the tourism, the hospitality sector as one on one side. Then you have the residential developments on the other side. And those are all done predominantly by the private sector. Yes, there are some joint venture arrangements with government uh, institutions, but predominantly private sector driven. That's that's really interesting. You made me laugh because that's a new way to define engagement. Yeah, they <laughs> they, they drive demand, and and we yeah. you know we we provide supply, um, which can be pretty stressful, I would imagine. Um, oh yes. So, Mark, we we talked about this before uh, with respect to digital uh, technology, digital yes. transformation. Um, it you know what. What's your take on digital technologies and is, does that, um, you know, how does that factor in to your business strategy, business growth, the ability to deliver products and services uh, to both the, you know, private sector demand and residential? 
You know, I just believe that we are just too slow to adapt technology, but for NWC, we are very much uh, see technology as an integral part of our ability to be efficient and to deliver the service that we are, sorry, committed to deliver to our customers. Uh, and, you know, we'll, we have to be frank. For us, we have a challenge in the level of resource to invest, to advance us at a fast speed. And so our, our involvement is really incremental as it is now. But certainly, uh, we believe technology is very critical to advance uh, the water utility. Uh, for that reason, that is why we made a decision some time ago to just install solid-state meters. So we move from mechanical meters to solid-state meters because the ultimate objective is to be able to sit in a room and get your meter readings. And your customers can be well in advance notified if there is a problem on their premises rather than sending out somebody with a vehicle which add to carbon footprint global warming, all of those other stuff that comes with just mobility uh, as it is now. Uh, and so outside of that, we believe management of our facilities is key as it relates to technology intervention. And for that, we have looked at and just about completing a overall technology review of the organization with the intent of getting up a, a transformation footprint, you know, giving us some guidance as where we're going next. But certainly, it is something that I believe is here and we have to embrace it. And NWC, as it is, will be embracing even more uh, the technology intervention. You know, you may say we are very slow, but we have gone through painstaking effort to look at putting out a mobile app for the organization it's it is about to come out we have gotten all the major um mobile store approval ios um google store and so forth but one thing we want to make sure that we do it captures the very key things that customers want a app to deliver and so by the end of this month certainly we will be going live with our mobile app where you can pay your bill get your bills report leaks, take a photograph, a georeference, send it to me, that type of, uh, you know, intervention. So we're now going to rely on even our customers to be more involved in accurately reporting where there may be, you know, challenges on a network uh, just by where they are. It's very interesting. Very interesting. I, I love how you've You've developed a strategy, and then there will be tactics associated with that in yes. terms of what what makes the most sense. And again, yeah. it, it, just listening to you, it, it strikes me that that connectivity and transparency with your customer base is, is such a key part of this, uh, your yeah. the technology innovation and adoption. Um, as part of it, it, it's not technology for the sake of technology. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Yeah. Absolutely not. I mean, you know, so right now we've been looking to even advance, e, you know, electronic vehicles in our fleet as a means of transitioning using latest uh, renewable uh, effort. And because we'll award a utility in a sense, especially for us, which, I, which is the largest consumer of electricity, single largest consumer of electricity locally, which is unheard of. In other right. jurisdictions, transportation carries, you know, a greater portion of the demand for electricity. It is the water utility that is consuming most of the electricity. And when you look at that, you then say to yourself, okay, so I have the largest carbon footprint on the island. What can I do to reduce that? And there are a number of things that we have to look at to tackle, you know, our carbon footprint as a water utility by virtue of our consumption of uh, fossil fuel predominantly fossil fuel um, energy. And one of them is EV, another PV. So we're using a lot of Vs right. at the end of what we're saying. <laughs> and <laughs> so, so and, and, and the next key thing is NRW. Well, I would reverse that around and put NRW at the top because that is a single most critical 
intervention uh, that we believe will reduce immediately our carbon footprint as a water utility. So That's brilliant. It's 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 interesting. It's interesting. Entertaining as well, but interesting. <laughs> I, you know, Mark, you don't have any gray hair that I can see. So I think you're doing uh, fine in terms of managing it. They're there, you know, they're there. But, you know, that the other day I look at one of my ministers and I said, you know, minister, I think he's probably my chairman. And I said, you know, working in the water utility is a highly stressed job. Yeah. Oftentimes it is not understood. But... The only time you get a conversation about water is either when you have quality alarms issues, then the public go awry, or when you have quantity issues, when there's really little or no water. So you can actually appreciate the stress that we yes. are enduring now at NWC because we're going in our ninth month of drought. That's so that's pretty shocking. Uh, well, I can see why you're driving conservation and, and water reuse. Absolutely. Um, so, so Mark, you're pretty pretty invisible until you know someone has a problem, right? Absolutely. Yep. That's the nature hey, of hey. the water business, because yeah. you know it's it's a running river in your house. You turn on the top, you <laughs> control the river. You turn it off, the river stops. You know, everybody's happy in that context, and rightfully so. You know, we 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 want a higher level of service at all times, and we should. But you know, there are always a lot going on behind the scene to make that happen, and so our effort is to drive that awareness, as well as appreciation, so that you know ordinary customers can appreciate, and that in itself will also drive the con conservation practices. Because if you have a greater appreciation. In, for water and the, the, the technicalities that go in it to make it portable so you can have proper health and all the rest of stuff, I think it will re resonate where persons become more aware, more conscious, and do the right thing. So it's it's perfect philosophical, sense. don't it? <laughs> no, I, I, I love that. Uh, we'll continue yeah. that conversation in person. Uh, yes, so yes. Hey Mark, one one last question uh, tied to uh, you know your your uh, digital strategy, innovation yes. strategy. Where do you where do you look for innovation? I know you you must get hounded, uh, if you will, by uh, providers. But in terms of how you think about it and where you go for information, is it your you know your peers globally? Um, you know, in terms of connectivity or, you know, where? It's it's a mixture, actually. It, it's, it's between peers and <laughs> vendors to a great extent, but the vendors have to come good because I know there's a lot of innovation out of Israel and I have those guys knocking on my door all the time. Um, what can we deliver? There's uh, the, the, the twin the digital twin team out of Spain that we would have seen I had a conversation with them because I was really impressed with what they had done uh, for Valencia when we were there uh, a year back. And so I'm looking at those possible partnership to see how I can bring greater visibility and not just allowing, it's not even allowing my own people to make the decision. I want technology to help me make that decision. Because I believe there is less errors. Uh, you know, we need a human being, but the technology can allow us to have less errors in our system. And so it gives a better management and decision making is 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 much seamless in, in my view. So that is that is some of the things that we're looking at. We we're having those conversations. Um we have not we're not the type of entity that would just leap you know, and say, well, just take a leap of faith and something will happen. We want to make sure things have been tried, tested, proven before we advance. And you can understand when you have limited resources, you don't want to be trying things multiple times. And honestly, I've always said to my team, 
there is no point for us to reinvent in the wheel. It has worked work elsewhere. We just may need to have tweaks here and tweaks there, but just ensure that it is tried and proven before we actually go deep dive in, into something. And I, I really motivated from the fact that we have limited cash to spend. Oh, sure. That's a sure reality. And I guess our most utilities have the same concerns as well. Oh, I, I agree with you. I think, uh, you know, every utility faces that challenge. So every investment needs to be but, thoughtful. But just impactful. a little thing I want to share with you, Will, because something you, you wouldn't be aware of. Within the region, as you have in, uh, indicated at the beginning, you know, NWC is seen as a leader in this in the space in in the caribbean and for that reason we would have had teams from bahamas we had team from dominica republic we had team coming up recently um, soon from trinidad and tobago and we have been really accommodating a lot more of our regional utility operatives so that Whatever we would have done, we are we are very much open to share our experience and just to tell them what were the lessons learned. Don't make this mistake. Don't make that mistake, and so forth. Because again, it's a it's how do we develop a really cohesive water operators partnership within the region so that each other learn from each you know each one learn from the other. Makes perfect sense. I think, uh, and in a lot of ways, that's the the beauty, the advantage of the utility sector, in that yeah. no one really competes, and everyone is, you know, potentially a collaborator and colleague. Um, I really do love it. I've really grown to, you know, uh, respect yeah. that that attribute. Okay. So, Mark, um, I, I would say thank you for this conversation and <laughs> in, in particular your your candor um, yes. in terms of your journey and I I, I want to say I think that reflects you know how you lead the organization <laughs> in terms of being you know proactive and transparent and engaging yes so in, in, incidentally you know when I said I'm here too long I said to my team many times and <laughs> you know this is as I said this is just almost like a fireside chat if you will you know but we're being <laughs> we're distilling everything <laughs> no, I think part of the challenge that i have is yeah. because i've worked through all the different areas within the organization so there is a high reliance on your experience your knowledge of the different areas within the business when it comes to decision and and therefore because the the 2,000 plus employees that I have know that it becomes a high reliance on you to really give the direction, you know, all the time from the top. So I always said to my VPs, you know, that's a disadvantage that I carry <laughs> because you all yeah. don't have the same experience as I do. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it's it's something that I I, I, I do will. You will ask me, NWC have about a thousand facilities island wide. I take it on myself, my duty, to go out, to visit the plants, to just go see what is happening because you learn so much from the little man, so to speak, on the facility. And you have and you get ideas in how to change things. Right now, as soon as I finish this conversation. I'm heading to the North Coast to talk with some of my regional managers about 80 kilometers away. So, you know, it's 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 part of the legacy that I believe, you know, is important to galvanize in support. You know, without demanding it, you get respect from your team, irrespective of the differences that may exist. And, and people understand and appreciate, you know, the, the the importance of you know being on the ground understanding the different intricacies and I tell you I take time out to explain how everything affects the things that we do you give it as basic as possible and and I think 
those stuff resonate and it's a part of being transparent, not just with your customers, but with your own staff. You know, you tell them what you can do and what you can't do rather than make promises and then your promises don't come through. Then it becomes a, a trust issue amongst your staff. And if there is distrust, you understand what that means. <laughs> right. Yeah. So but, it, it's, it's, it's part of the whole process. Yeah. I love the wisdom and you've built a great personal brand yeah. and brand for your utility. So Mark, thanks again so much. I, I look forward to, uh, you're welcome. We philosophy discussion with you in person. Oh yes. <laughs> Always lively when we do. <laughs> yeah, you bet. I love yes. it. All right. Mark, great. thanks so much again. Really, really appreciate it. And, and good yeah. to see you. And I love your blue jacket. Thank you. I love yours too. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Thank you.